All right, in the last video, I showed you how to build the arm for this little potato guy. And now what I'm going to do is start building some of the other pieces that might be of interest. So with the eye, um, in the last video you saw, I had a lot of layers and isolate nodes. So I had these color art, line art, underlay, and they take up a lot of space. So I want to show you what I prefer to do instead of taking up that much space. I like to abbreviate those names. And so here is my little isolate layers group, right? Inside of it, I had everything named the full names. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. Now it's fine for me to copy and paste this because it's not really cloning anything weird the same way it would do a drawing layer or a peg. So just don't worry, you can copy and paste composites and effects and stuff and it doesn't seem to cause them to have interesting relationship issues. Okay, I'm gonna call these my um, abbreviated layers. Abbreviated isolate layers. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and I am going to change them. Overlay is gonna be OL. I'm just gonna show the layer properties here. I've got another window. Line art is gonna be LA. Color art is gonna be CA. Underlay UL. And the auto patch is gonna be AP. And now I can move them closer together because they don't need to be that far apart now, which is which is nice. Saving some room. And I love abbreviating. Okay, next up, I want to put any other things that I'm gonna use a lot in here. I'm just gonna cut all these. I'm gonna use my cable cutters and uncheck them. I also want to bring in um, a cutter and I'm gonna uh, invert it. So double click it and I'm gonna choose I'm just gonna type reveal because that's what this does and it makes more sense to me instead of saying invert cutter. Next up, I'm gonna add a visibility node because I'm gonna make those little handles all over the place. And I'm going to call this uh, visibility, but I don't want it to show in the render view, right? So these are just a bunch of things that I keep reusing all the time and I just want to leave them in here. All right, so I'm gonna click on these. I'm gonna open my other node view, center on selection so I can see them up here and copy and paste from them into the current stuff that I'm working on. All right, let's start on the eyeball. So here's the eye. Now I want the pupil to show up behind the line art of the eye, but in front of the white of the eye. So I need to split off the line and the color here. So I'm going to copy and paste those line art and color art from here to there. Control C, Control V. I'll hook it up. I'll put the line art in front of everything and the color art behind everything. Okay. So now the pupil will go behind. Oh, they don't have any pegs so I can't move them yet. All right, let's add some pegs. I'm going to select all of these, Control shift p it gives them all a peg and it's named the right thing. Then I'm going to go to the I, I'm going to go Control p Control p and I just want to name these um, what I want them to be named. So then this would be, oh, I'm going to add another one to the pupil. All right, so I want this pupil to bring the highlight with it. So I'll call this pupil and hl dash p. Oh, I guess I could just call it pupil dash mp for master peg. That makes sense. All right, so this one is gonna be i and pupil, right? Now, occasionally I do like to parent, instead of going to the pupil next, sometimes I do like to go here to there because sometimes I will want to squash and stretch both of those together at the same time and not have the pupil 
doing that, and that's actually my preference, so I'm just going to do that right now. I am going to say this is I and brow dash mp, and then this one will be the I master peg, the ultimate master peg. So let's see what's happening. I can move this, but I want it to only show up when it's on the white of the eye. All right, so that means I want the reveal, the cutter that's backwards, right? Copy that, paste it here. So I need to slide it into this, the pupil. So the pupil can only show up when the color art is there. All right, good, that works. But also, I want this to not be showing up the highlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little composite under the pupil. Control H, hold Alt, slide it into here, put this on that, and then I'm going to turn this to a bitmap composite because I'm never going to want the highlight to be layered below the pupil. So if that makes sense. I will just do pupil underscore comp. And then let's type out what's happening here. So this is going to be pupil revealed on I color art. I'll drag this down so there's not so much stuff going on right there. All right, so here we've got this. We've got the brow sitting over here. I'm going to go ahead and insert a backdrop behind it just so I can find the brow really fast. Brow. Okay. And then maybe I will add a backdrop behind this just so it's really easy to find what I'm looking for. This will just be I white. And I don't have to add a backdrop behind everything. Just that's good, but maybe I will anyways. All right, pupil. And maybe make that blue. All right, I'm just gonna move this eye backdrop for now. I'm holding Alt to drag it. I like things to be lined up nicely, so I'm gonna hold Alt and just line these all up. Sorry, I know it's my OCD taken over here. Just. I like to have it all lined up looking nice. All right, so there's the eye. I can move this, and then I get to that, or I'm here. Next up, I'm pressing B, next up, there. So I'll reset all those back to the zeros and ones. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all those pivot points. So first the brow, Alt-3. Again, remember, I like to put it on a corner. And this is the, the corner that always makes the most sense to me for eyebrows. If we want to go down, we can squash and stretch it, skew it, all that fun stuff. I'm going to press R to reset. Uh, pupil highlight, OK. I'll just center that, that's fine the pupil, center that, that's fine. And then the eyeball itself. Now this is going to be different. I like to put it down here at the bottom because quite often you're going to want to squash and stretch it like this instead of having it squash and stretch from the middle. It just looks weird. So that's the place that I choose to keep it. I do want you to notice also that when I am using a pivot position in more than one place, I usually like to line all of those pegs up vertically just to indicate that these are all kind of going to pivot from the same spot. All right, that's the completed eyeball. So I am going to group that. So select it all, control G, group, and then I'm going to name it I. Put it here. I usually like to um, line these up with the drawing layers and then I'll put this backdrop behind it because I'm going to have two eyes here eventually. Great. 
All right, so that is how you rig an eyeball. I almost forgot to show you how I would do the deformers on the eye. So I'm going to go to the eye and I would not put a deformer on the pupil or on the highlight, but I do often put one on the eyeball itself. Again, just try to use as few points as possible. I mean, I guess you could do two points. Let's test it and see what we think. I suspect it might be too few, but uh, maybe not. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, so you can go like that. You could hold Alt and break it. And that looks cute. It can come up. Let's see. Render view. It doesn't look quite as broken. But, uh, you know, I think for this character, I'm going to just do the two points. A lot of the time I'll do four, but it seems to work just fine on this type of character. So I'll go back to the rigging tool. Maybe I will go into um, center on selection, show the isolate, outline mode. Just try to get this a little bit more fitted more perfectly, <clears throat> more accurately. Okay. There we go. All right, so that is going to be all that is needed for there. You want to make sure to unsolo and unoutline. And then for the eyebrow, I would definitely put four points on that. And often for eyebrows, you're going to want to just draw some additional swaps, but it can be nice to have this freedom to have an uh, envelope that is easy to use and readily available. Because check this out, you can uh, transform tool right now, you can bring it down, you can get whatever you want. So. I think maybe well, I'm going to show you how jagged it gets sometimes. Oh, it still looks smooth. Yeah, cool. Normally, I think I would go ahead and add some more um, using the contour editor, add some more points. I'm holding control and clicking to add a bunch more points just so that when it uh, transforms, it it's more smooth. All right, cool. So that that is the the end of rigging the eye and finishing that see you soon